Ladies and gentlemen, we are now approaching our very last question for each of the gubernatorial candidates. And while I still have your attention, uh, because I know after the forum, everybody's just going to break. So I do need to remind you, October 19th, our Filipino community of Guam 64th anniversary will take place at the Dusitani Guam. And we are going to be celebrating with uh, Miss Jessica Sanchez, who is uh, an American Idol winner. And I also want to ask those who are running for a public office who are in the audience tonight to please stand up. And if I can also recognize your presence, if you are running for public office, I see uh, Mr. Servino at the back, uh, Lacia Casil, Janae Uggen, and Sabina, and Dr. Melu Milligan, and Ms. Amanda Shelton. And did I miss anybody? No? Okay, so we would like to also thank you for being here tonight and uh, being a part of our discussion. And Mr. Armando Dominguez. Yeah. Did I miss anybody? I think that covers the room. Thank you so much for being here. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the last question. And um, it'll now be posed to Ms. Lulian Guerrero first. Yeah? OK. This question deals with the visa waiver program. Under the visa waiver program administered by the federal government, Guam currently enjoys the privilege of allowing foreign visitors from neighboring countries such as Japan, Korea, and Taiwan. As you may know, visitors from the Philippines without a U.S. visa are not allowed to visit Guam under the current visa waiver program. If elected governor, would you be willing, and if so, what would you do to facilitate the inclusion of visitors from the Philippines and in including them in the visa waiver program or similar temporary entry programs currently in place. As I said earlier, our Filipino community is very well integrated with our Guam community. We are only three to four hours away from the Philippines. And so why can't we be traveling frequently? Why can't the people whose family are in the Philippines able to come over here and visit with the families here? Families are very important to the success of a community. So I want to make sure that they have the opportunity to travel back and forth and be with their families. As governor, I am supporting the Guam Visa Waiver Program. As governor, I will have the ability to recommend to the Homeland Security countries and, and countries that should be on the visa waiver program. And I will make sure that the Philippines is on that list. Why? Because we value, we value the lives and the families of our Filipino our Chamorro, our Koreans, our Micronesians, and we are a diverse culture here. That's the beauty of our people of Guam. So yes, I will support the Guam Visa Waiver Program, and I will make sure it's included in recommended countries that's able to visit our island of Guam. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Same question for former Governor Carl Gutierrez. When I was governor, this was like 20 years ago, let's see. At that time, the overstay of the Filipinos in the United States was tremendous. And the U.S. immigration only tracks people coming in, they don't track them going out. So in my relationship with President Clinton, I asked him to give us a hybrid kind of a visa waiver to be administered out of the governor's office. We had an approval of 125 people coming in every month and as they leave, more will be approved over at the, at the U.S. immigration in the Philippines. So that we test it. And that the, I told them the customs people here, the police department here, will be the one to administer. We're going to have our biometrics in there so they can look at your thumb or your eye. But we would tell them that we would do the federal job of making sure that they leave. And it was approved. Then the legislature stepped in and said, no, we want to administer it out of the legislature so they can get the votes. So then President Clinton said, hey, wala na pagasa those guys again. Never mind. If you guys cannot get together and do a, a pilot program, because now, now I'm going to go to C-230. 
because he questioned Trump. How come, how come you come here with no visa and we have to get visa from you? That's the man I want to ally with and take him to Washington and say, let's open up the visa waiver. In the Metro Manila area, now 38% are in the middle to higher class Filipinos. It's not the same as when I was there. So it's easy now to go to Trump and talk to 230 and say, let's go and partner up and get a visa waiver now for the Philippines. It doesn't need to pass a law. The law doesn't need to be passed. It just needs to be included in the present law right now. Just put Philippines in there and tapos na. Next is Lieutenant Governor Ray Tenorio. I love this guy. <laughs> you know, I, everything they said is true. It, you know, I was talking to my people the other day. Don't say what they're saying is right. They're right. It's true. We should and we will. But I'll tell you, under uh, Governor Ray Tenorio, President Donald Trump will meet with me. And we will work with them to get it put in. So we don't need to change the law. That's true. We, we, we've increased substantially. Uh, actually, we've doubled the number of Philippine tourists that have come to Guam under our administration. Uh, I was on a plane on the way back, and I, I saw this family, and I, and I assumed that they were coming back to Guam. And I said, oh, so how long are you in the Philippines? Actually, yeah, we live in the Philippines. We're coming to visit Guam. We have a great number of uh, Filipino tourists, and my chief of staff is in the back, and he met with some of them uh, a few uh, days ago. But they really want to come here, and they enjoy it thoroughly. It's, it's a great place. They know their families here. They like spending time in Guam, and, and, and as uh, Lou talked about, they're very much interested in coming here. And I also want to expand that. And I have to say, our administration has been very successful. We got parole authority for Russia in our administration. We had thousands of uh, Russian tourists who were coming, and they were spending really good money. And they stay like seven times longer than most of the other tourists, which is exceptional for Guam. But I also want to open up v uh, Vietnam as well as China. So let's get the, you know, Vietnam, let's get China, let's get the Philippines and make sure we increase our tourism market because ladies and gentlemen it's all upside with more tourists more families more residents more business more exchange grows our economy grows our island and makes us a better place but I'm Islam Paul thank you very much who's Masi thank you so much uh, Lieutenant Governor Ray Sonorio so note to the timekeepers we are going to be entering our closing statements and I want to remind you that you have three minutes for your closing statements. And we are going to start with the same order when we deliver the opening statements. So to deliver his closing statements is former Governor Carl Gutierrez. Thank you, Norm. Thank you, everyone. Um, most of the people that came here over the last 74 years, 75 years, they came here because Guam was a very special place. And the specialness of Guam was its people, very hospitable, and they're just like the culture of the Philippines and our neighboring Micronesia. They came here, and we became one. We intermarry. We don't even know who's Filipino or who's not Filipino anymore. But don't you feel that Guam has lost its soul? When you see people, 750 of them are homeless, veterans are homeless, sitting on the side of the street, sleeping on the side of the street, and no one's going out there from the highest level of government and look them in the eye and give them hope, lift them up. Don't make them feel like they're marginalized and we don't care about them. We have to take, make Guam, Guam again, where we help one another. In Tagalog, it's nafamolik. my ladies and gentlemen. That's what it is. We're losing that. Oh, I hope it is not lost. But Fred and I want to bring that back. It's so important that specialness of Guam is why people come here. Even in the tourism, we're going to try to recycle that thing out so they actually meet the people and feel the people. Ladies and gentlemen, it's very, very dire right now that we are heading to a collapse. Get somebody in there that has gone through the same day in 1995 I extricated us from financial hardships. We got ourselves out and we grew and we helped people. My wife had people helping people so that those that fall through the cracks, 
Her organization helped thousands of Filipinos, Chamorros, everybody else. Nobody has done that. It's a partnership. It's got to be in your heart. It is not just a, a nice slogan. When we got out of office in 2003, we never left the people. People were delivering for, at, my, at my house. I don't know how many cases of water about five years after I left. I said, what's that? He says, I don't know, sir. They just told me to give it to the governor. I said, I'm not a governor. It, no, Camacho is out there. But they only remember me as governor because Jerry and I were out in the community looking for you. The Magalahi who's going to get in the center of the public square and listen to the people. Let them feel you and touch you, that you're real. You can't lock out yourself at Adelu and never see anyone. I go out to the community. If I see that you need help, there's help that's going to come. Help will be on the way. Either government or it's going to be Jerry's people helping people. We're not going to let you down. You are part of this community, and no one's going to be left out. No one's going to be marginalized. Believe me. Mga kababayan, ako po si Carl Gutierrez. Nananawagan na muli sa inyong lahat. Ako po ay nagnanayos na kayo ay maling paglingkuran. O pang sa ganoon po, ay maibalik natin muli ang kaayosan at pagtitiwala ng taong bayan sa atin pamahalaan. Thank you, former Governor Carl Gutierrez. To deliver his closing remarks is Lieutenant Governor Ray Tenorio. First of all, maraming maraming salamat po to all of our supporters, to everyone who's here tonight. Thank you so much. We, we all are Guam, every one of you, no matter what camp you're supporting. You've got good people, Dennis, Frank, Lou, Carl. We're all here to serve you, we really are. We've been doing this for a long time. There's no benefit to me uh, by stepping on someone else to get to a higher place. I'm not here for myself. I'm here for the future. I'm here for the next generation. I'm here to make your future better and your families. We are here to make our community better. There's, there's no benefit in tearing people down. There's only benefit by building people up. They're good people who want to make our island better, and that's all they want. There's no malice here. We want to make our community better, and that's why I'm running with my partner, Tony. We want to change the formula. That's why I'm talking about education so much. I'm not an educator, but I care about this community just as much as anyone. And I want to make sure we don't see so many of those people who are begging on the street who are homeless. I, want, I don't want to see people committing crimes, but I see the common denominator by changing the formula, by making sure that we give them the skills to get them the jobs, to get them the quality of life. We change things dramatically. Transformation. We need to transform the island because it's not going to change by getting more cops. It's not going to change by getting more customs officers. Yes, we'll always need more of them, but we've got to change the reason why we have these problems. You have to look at the fundamentals. And the fundamentals are not how much bonds we have, it's what we put that into. Building schools, building roads, building things that help you and your community. I'm not here for me, I'm here for you. I love Guam. I love the Filipinos and the Koreans and the Japanese and the Chinese and the Chamorros and everyone who makes our island a great place. And all I want to do is ask you to give me a chance to be governor because I love this island, because we deserve a better and improvement. We'll build on the foundations of Carl Gutierrez and Phyllis Camacho and Paul Calvo and Joseph Ada. We'll build on the foundation of Eddie Calvo and Ricky Berdalio. We'll build on the great things that all of them have done, but we've got to do it together. So after this primary election, God forbid, but if your candidate doesn't make it, I'm asking you, please consider Tenorio Ada so we can get together and make this island a beautiful place for all of us. Maraming maraming salamat po. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor Ray Tenorio. And now to deliver her closing remarks is former Senator Lulian Guerrero. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, 
I want again thank you and express my gratitude to the Filipino community of Guam for hosting this gubernatorial forum and especially to FCG's past leadership. It was under your leadership that FCG has grown and it was through such leadership that you were successful in passing on the values of the community and productive engagement to the generation following you. Guam is home for all of us, and I'm very grateful for the opportunity to share what I would do as governor of Guam. Tonight, we've addressed concerns that you have raised. There are so many different groups in Guam who have specific issues unique to their members. Our common thread, however, is that there are more serious concerns about Guam today than ever before. And those concerns and what it means to our future is unifying our voices to change this island for the better. No matter where we came from, no matter our heritage, our economic or social status, whether we're first generation or 10th generation Guamanians, we are the people of Guam. The very problems that we see affecting us as individuals or groups affect all of us. As such, the government's fiscal crisis is our crisis. GMH's mountain of debt, loss of accreditation, and the lack of affordable, accessible health care is all of our struggle. Rising crime and public safety are no longer limited to villages and neighborhoods. Crime and public safety is now a concern at work and for our children at school. It is in our minds at the mall parking lot. Problems in the tourism sector do not end at the doors of hotels, tour companies, and taxis. As fellow stakeholders, Josh and I will make sure your voice and your concerns are not only heard, but acted on. I believe that this election is about restoring faith in our future and asking ourselves and our neighbors, who can we trust? Who can we trust to manage our fiscal crisis, collect taxes due to our people, make our government more efficient and responsive, fix GMH, and keep our families safe. If you want real reform, real change, and solutions, then I ask you to vote for me. As governor, I will work every day to be worthy of your trust. I will focus on partnerships, not politics. I will not forget that the people of Guam are my boss, and I will not rest until the people's work is done. Maraming salamat po si Jules Masi, and thank you. Have a safe evening. Thank you so much, former Senator Lulian Guerrero. And ladies and gentlemen, before we officially conclude tonight, I want to thank the members of the media who are here tonight as well, and to our friends at KUAM, who is recording the uh, forum tonight and it'll be aired in its entirety at a date to be announced so if you want to know when this is going to air again please visit our Facebook page for that broadcast schedule ladies and gentlemen how about a round of applause for former governor Carl Gutierrez <laughs> lieutenant governor Ray Tenorio and former senator Lou Leon Guerrero that concludes our presentation please drive home safely